Hi, this is Abba Makama, writer, director of The Lost Okoroshi, and this is the process behind The Lost Okoroshi. The Lost Okuroshi is a story about a security guard called Raymond Obinwa who is being haunted by a purple ancestral spirit called the Okuroshi in his dreams. And one day he wakes up completely transmorphed into the ancestral spirit and begins a, a psychedelic trip through um, Lagos, a spiritual psychedelic trip through Lagos. So this is a project that I'm particularly proud of because anytime I'm in the cinema, I'm watching, I'm watching the audience like an orchestra and I'm like, you're supposed to laugh here and then, then they laugh, you're supposed to deep sigh here, you're frustrated. So I'm like literally seeing um, all these, these, these notes I've written being, being played in real time, you know, so it, a good a, a scene that I I was ch very challenging to shoot was the scene where Raymond wakes up completely transformed into the masquerade. This is Shenwa Jai and Judith Audu in the scene. Um, it starts out with um, it's a very long scene because it transitions from when he's awake, when before he falls asleep, goes into the dream world, and now wakes up transformed as the masquerade. So um, this is the pivotal part in the film, you know. This is also, it's one of those cinematic climaxes where um, it's a great deal that's happening. This guy was once human and is now transformed. And it's the first time you're seeing um, how he's going to react to this transformation. And I remember on paper, what we wrote was very, it was very um, over the top comedy, but in real time, not even before that, I just kept on thinking, when I'm directing this, I'm probably going to direct it in a very serious way. There will be humor in that. His wife will have to be freaking out, and it has to be believable, and she has to be claustrophobic, almost in a corner like she can't, her husband just turned to this thing. She's screaming Jesus, she can't come out because it's also a tiny space. So location was key. And also filming in that location, because it's such a tight space, um, was quite intense and it was hot. It was, so you're, you have two actors, camera, gaffer, you have lights rigged, you have the sound guy, his boom, all this stuff in a tiny the space is probably as small as this, this, this section of the studio. Yeah, that was quite intense. Like, we were all dripping of set, sweat. But when you watch the scene now and you watch that transformation and you see her literally go through stages of grief where she's completely... Um, she's, she's, she's gone berserk because he has changed. Then she's now just sobbing. Then she's now kind of just quiet and almost accepting this is the reality. Actually, she's bewildered first. She's still puzzled. Then she's now accepted the reality. And now she's like, okay, this man has changed into a masquerade. It's not his fault. What do we do? So that's, um, that was, to me, the most challenging scene to film. In terms of the tone of the picture, it's, um, it's a bit starky and dark, but it's also very, it's humorous, but in a subtle way. Um, it's a satirical piece. Um, therefore, there are a lot of things that relate to what's happening in society right now that we delve into and kind of um, poke fun at. I'm one of the few people that uses satire as a tool to express my, my thoughts or my disdain or my 
you know, feelings on certain subject pattern, you can actually get away with it without being crucified. But in terms of the tone and also even the aesthetic of the film, it has a very eerie tone and nostalgic as well. We shot in 4 by 3 aspect ratio, um, which is the cinema box and also synonymous to um, pre-digital television um, and gave it a kind of a grainy feel. We are trying to go for um, a 90s, it's an homage to VHS 90s Nollywood slash the aesthetic of the 90s um, indie films that came out that year like Sex Lies and Videotapes, uh, Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs. So the tone of the picture is um, has, has a very specific aesthetic aesthetic tone with the, the way it's framed and the minimalism. Minimalism is something that it was very key. Use of color. Um, I'm the art director of the picture as well. So every single, I treated every single shot as if I was painting because I'm also a painter as well. So yeah. You come late to this office one more time. Try me and come late one more time. You hear me when you hear everything I talk. Uh, this this worked on time, mm. <laughs> Every day you don't tire, don't tire. Big job, no good. Every time you complain, eh? I don't know if I, I tried it. I tried to treat it as what what it deserved, you know. Um, I guess the only difference with my past film, Green White Green, was we were more meticulous in working and more strategic. And then in terms of narrative structure, I chose a much more linear structure. Almost 80% stayed by the script. It was a very regimented type of filmmaking as opposed to Green White Green where we were figuring it out as we were filming, um, which is a more experimental film. This is very linear, starts at A, ends at Z.